with one win under his belt and a brand new boat that's riding solid and fast, Steve David hopes to put T-plus in the winner's circle again. The Winston Eagle has had some bad luck. Mark Tate wants that string broken now and hopes to do that in Evansville. ESPN presents the RC Cola 1993 Unlimited Hydroplane Series. of this series, the Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio from Evansville, Indiana. Sponsored by RC Cola. Race to the taste of RC Cola, me and my RC. And by O'Doul's. It's what beer drinkers drink when they're not drinking beer. And by Budweiser. Beachwood A's for that smooth taste. Proud to be your bud. This is Evansville, Indiana, on the banks of the Ohio River, the site of the 15th annual Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Hendrick, along with Dick Crippen. And Dick, we're nearing the halfway point of this season. The boats are serving notice that they're getting faster. Yeah, they're getting faster, and some of them are even getting newer. We've got a couple of new boats out here and a couple of new ideas that are going to be tried on this course. The course has been very good during qualifying, and if it holds today, I expect that we're going to see some very fast competition. Miss Budweiser is dominated, but the other boats are right on its tail. Over 165 mile an hour is a record for the Winston Select Lap Award and a world record for two-mile course. And you know, this morning in testing and warming up, the Winston Eagle hit a 164. That's right. Looked very, very good all around. You can always tell how it's riding by the rooster tail. If it's nice and smooth around the back, then you know that it's riding very solid in the water. And that particular rooster tail, you and I happen to see from up high, and it was beautiful. The Winston Select Lap Award winner. Chip Hanauer in the Miss Budweiser. Take a look at the run. 165.975 miles per hour. That's a new world record on a two-mile course in a qualification lap. A lot of attention going to this boat, the brand-new T-Plus. A gorgeous boat, and look what it looked like six weeks ago. This is the shop in Seattle, Washington. The crew hard at work. They were working against the deadline to get the boat ready to race. This crew is very proud of the effort they put into the boat. It's a fabulous package. We're very excited about it and very much looking forward to running it the first time. Well, the clock ran out on keeping track of ours. It's, uh, we don't see much daylight except when the doors are open here. We're working uh, around the clock on it. We felt that the timing was right for us to make a move like this and get involved with a, with a new project to where hopefully we can get a, a jump on some of the other programs um, by getting something started this year instead of waiting a year to see if it's going to work. It's a gamble that we take, we've taken and, and I, I feel that it's a good gamble. Well, here's the result of it. Megan Harvey, Jim Harvey's daughter, is about to christen the boat. Well, if things go along with the boat on water as they did in the christening, we can look for big things from the T-plus crew in the future. Take a look at the maiden voyage of this boat. This is the first time out of the box for this boat. He hits 141.334 miles per hour. Great testament to the crew and a very proud owner. Down here with Jim Harvey, a proud owner of a brand new T-Plus. And Jim, all the parts you've borrowed, all the old boats that you've rejuvenated, this is your first real haul. You have to be thrilled. Uh, we're really excited, uh, 26 years or so plus in the sport. Uh, to have a new boat, it's a very proud moment, and uh, none of the parts are borrowed or used. This is all brand new parts in this boat, and we worked very hard, the team did in the last month, but with the support of Howard Lennerson of Hilton Oil and Bruce McCaw, uh, we couldn't have done it, and uh, they're not here today with us, but they're with us in heart. Around 100,000 race fans readying for racing here on the Ohio River in Evansville, Indiana. And for the action in Heat 1A, in lane one, it'll be the tie, driven by George Woods, Jr. The owner is Bill Wooster, brightly colored boat. In lane two, Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer, looking for his third consecutive win. Winston Eagle will be in lane three, Mark Tate, the driver. Circus Circus in lane four with Dave Billwock. 
and the Ken Muscatel boat, the Gerst Amber, will be on the outside as they come down now for the start, Dick. Green flag, the start of heat 1A. All five boats take the start. On the inside, it's the tide boat challenging on the outside. Lane number two is the Miss Budweiser. It looks like Chip Hanauer is going to get the boat in front as they come out of turn number two. Let's see if he can hold it as they hit the back stretch. Again, the inside boat on the buoys is the tide. Meanwhile, Winston Eagle back in third is charging. And look on the outside comes the Circus Circus as they go into corner number three down that back chute. We're looking at the number two boat now. George Woods Jr. in the tide. Look at Winston. Come on, Dick. Right up the rooster tail of the Budweiser. Winston Eagle now taking over second place. The Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer in the lead, but he is going to be challenged by the Winston Eagle. There you see Mark Tate pop out of the rooster tail, holding in third on the outside now at Circus Circus. He's going to challenge the tide boat. Those boats tying up for third place as they run down the front straight again and again approach the dog leg, go through it. Now they come into the turns with the Budweiser leading. That's lap one of three, and the speed for the Budweiser, 150.843, over 150 mile an hour. And we notice as the Miss Budweiser goes through turn number two, there's a little bit of roughness out there. Chip Hanauer will have to be very alert to that. The boats further back in the pack actually will hit rougher water. Winston Eagle looks like she's handling pretty good. A little porpoising right there. Maybe they'll straighten those wings out just a little bit in the next heat, but right now, he's having no trouble at all with speed. He's holding a solid second place to the Miss Budweiser. Chip Hanauer having no problem in the lead. And just about 150 mile an hour in lap number two with one more to go. 149.9 battle has been back in third place with the Circus Circus and the Tide boat. There you saw the Winston Eagle as Tide tried to come up on the inside, was not able to do it. Back in fifth, it is the Gerst Amber boat, Ken Muscatel. Ken just happy to be out there on the course running the boat. They had some engine problems earlier in the year. Fourth place is the Circus Circus, driven by Dave Billwalk. This boat again looking for more speed. They've had a lot of problem with damage to the boat, not always the cause of the boat team or the driver it's just stuff that happens in the race so they're happy to be running as a hole at this point as the checker flag wakes up for this budweiser circus circus that's the new boat that they got back after the accident in detroit there's the checkered flag miss budweiser chip hanauer taking the win and heat 1a winston eagle comes in second again a little bit of a drag race with the tide boat but winston eagle wins it without wings incidentally there's the wing laying back in the water and the tide third circus circus fourth first and overall fifth in heat 1A. We'll be back with more action on the RC Cola Hydroplane Series, the Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio, in just a moment. Back at Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio in Evansville, Indiana. We've had a winner already, Chip Hanauer. Let's go down and find out his thoughts along with Jim Hendrick and a special guest. Chip, that seemed to be pretty easy, or was it easier than it looked? Jim, you always say that when we win, and it's never easy. It's, uh, you know, it's not qualifying. The turn one is getting real rough. Each lap is building and building, and by the final lap, in a three-lap race, it was very rough. In a five-lap race, it's going to be an ocean. August Bush the third is with us, and August, you have the distinction of being the oldest sponsor for 31 straight years of this sport. We thank you for that, and you've been backing that guy by the name of Bernie Little. That guy, Bernie Little, introduced me to this sport more than 31 years ago, and he is the king of this sport, and Budweiser is the king of beers, and they belong together. We have four boats that are set to go in Heat 1B. As we mentioned, the Circus Circus has their brand new boat back after the accident in Detroit. Let's go down to the pits and Dick Griffin. Dick? Circus Circus came on the circuit with a brand new boat this year, but it got kind of banged up in Detroit, and here it is, Evansville, Indiana, and Dan, it's back together again. This crew has had some work. Yeah, the last nine days, uh, six of us have been working 18 hours a day to get this boat back together, and also our backup boat, which was uh, injured a little bit down in Miami. The boat out during qualifying runs, you had a little bit of porpoising problem with it? Yeah, we're trying out different skid fins to get around the corner, and that was just a different skid fin we had on, and so it made it porpoise, and we put back on another one, and we have several more to uh, try today. We have a good crowd on hand, and they'll sit anywhere. This is the water tower on the edge of the Ohio River here in Evansville, Indiana, where we'll see in lane one and 1B, our construction driven by Mark Evans. The Kellogg's Frosted Flakes with Mike Hansen from Madison, Indiana. 
the Miss Key Plus, a brand new boat, as we told you earlier, driven by Steve David. Alvy's American Eagle, the only piston packer in the fleet, Mitch Evans at the wheel. Here they come for the start of 1B. As the green flag flies on the Ohio River, the art construction boat in lane number one trying to take the lead. Mark Evans, see if he can hold on to it. He's going to be challenged on the outside in lane number two by the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Mike Hansen of Madison, Indiana, getting ready for a big race next week up in Madison, Indiana, the hometown of the boat, and Mike Hansen, its driver. Art Construction coming out of turn number two has the lead. Will Mike Hansen be able to mount a challenge? That boat, the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, has been riding better and better this year. Now, it's kind of interesting, Jim, because Art Construction, driven by Mark Evans, Mark has a theory. They don't have a lot of parts for the boat, so what they do is run rather conservative in qualifying, and then he tries to go all out during the actual race. So he says his qualifying speeds really don't indicate how the boat is running when it comes into race day. Well, he's averaging right now about 136 mile an hour, and he's not being pushed too much by the Frosted Flakes at this point. Now, for those of you who might not know, there are two Evans boys in this particular heat. Mark Evans from Lake Chelan is in first place, while his brother, Mitch Evans, currently in the Alvey's American Eagle, is in fourth. And, of course, Mark Evans is in the lead boat that is a turbine-powered boat, and trailing the fleet right now is Mitch Evans, his brother, in Alvey's American Eagle. A little bit of a challenge there, it looked like, by the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, but again, he drops back as Mark Evans powers on. Anyway, it was kind of interesting that the two brothers, one driving a turbine and the other one right there on your screen driving the piston packer, kind of represents the advances in hydroplane racing and how things have gone over the past couple of years. There's a beautiful shot now as the two turbine boats that are vying for the lead. Art Construction and the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes come out side by side. As far as rooster tails are concerned, there's about a five boat length difference between first and second place at this point. There's a different strategy here in 1993 because last year the B section boats that even 1B, 2B, 3B only got half points. They voted in the offseason. A full 400 for first, 300 for second, 225 for third. So sometimes Kellogg's is looking at, well, I can get 300 points here and still put myself in a pretty good position to qualify in the final field. As a matter of fact, uh, on the overall, as far as points are concerned, the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes has been holding a very solid second place all season long. We got a little glance there at the brand new Miss T plus Steve David. I don't doubt that Steve probably is testing out the boat a little bit here to find out what it does in the actual run of a race. Here's your checkered flag out for Art Construction. Mark Evans, he's the winner, followed by the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, then the Miss T plus and the American Eagle, Mitch Evans driving. Nine boats in competition. All nine have finished their first heat of action. We'll be back with more after this timeout. I'm Jim Hendrick along with Dick Griffin in Evansville, Indiana as we look at the crowd for Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio, part of the Evansville Freedom Festival. Let's go down to Dick Griffin in the pits. No better way to start out the day than with a win, Mark. No kidding. So much for our conservative run, but oh well. What was handled really good. Felt good. I knew we had to get in there ahead of T uh, Tony the Tiger and, and get in good position. I expected him to come on by, but our both seemed to be running so well. I went ahead and went for it and decided to pick up the extra points, you know, and win the heat. Both just run fantastic. It takes a good interaction between the crew and the driver to be successful. Dick Trippin asked crew chief Danny High, what does it take to win a race? The guy that wins a bow race on Sunday is going to have the best overall combination. It's, it's really hard to get one single advantage over anybody up and down the beach. So you really need the best combination. And uh, you may not have the best motor or the best propeller or the best boat ride, but if you've got the best combination of the three, then, uh, and your driver's on on that day, feels comfortable, then you'll win the boat race. Is that the key, George feeling comfortable? Because I know he has tremendous confidence in this crew. Well, when George feels comfortable, obviously he feels he can go faster. It means the boat's handling well, and uh, generally we do better. Another boat that seems to be handling much better, and a brand new one in 1993, is driven by driver Ken Muscatel. Ken Muscatel came on the circuit with a boat that was new to you anyway, Ken. Therefore, you had to try to put all the little pieces together at once. Well, we're learning every time we run. 
Um, this boat hasn't run for three years. There were a lot of things, little things that we needed to fix one at a time. You learn every time you go out, something breaks or something needs an adjustment. Just like the last time we ran, new engine, it was making a little too much temperature, so I ran the foot throttle back and forth to try and keep under the critical mass. Next time we'll run faster. Now here's the lineup for Heat 2A. The Tide in lane one, Kellogg's lane two, Miss T Plus in lane three, the Circus Circus in lane four, and on the outside, the Gerst Amber, driven by Ken Muscatel. Coming down to the start, green flag, and they are off and running. The Tide has the favorite inside spot on this course. As wide as the course is, the turns can be very, very tricky. Lane two, Kellogg's Frosted Flakes now moving out in front, along with the T-plus in lane number three. Look at them hop through that second turn. That's the one where they have to be careful. George Woods Jr., careful and strong. He comes out of it in the lead in the tide. And I'll tell you what, in lane three, you can see the T-plus in between those two boats. In the middle of their both of those cruiser tails is the Kellogg Tony the Tiger. Watch him, Dick, as they come down here in corner number four. There's another boat in there. There he is. Very evenly matched this time around. George Woods Jr. finds a little bit of power coming out of turn number four. He puts it into effect, and he takes the lead. So George Woods Jr. now is your leader, but look at Kellogg's coming on. Mike Hansen has really got Tony the Tiger revved up. The Frosted Flakes boat is coming on strong, and they're fanned out almost perfectly on the course with a Miss T-plus riding in third. A great shot from our helicopters as the T-plus goes wide. We look at our leader, the Tide, George Woods Jr. That boat is in, whoop, getting a little light there as we look at Kellogg's in the rooster tail of the Tide, currently riding in second place. It's a good time to tell everybody that these guys don't know the water conditions from one spot to another. Miss T Plus, still learning the boat. Stephen David put this boat in the water for the first time here in Evansville. He's got to find out how it reacts to the other wakes and the air currents coming off other boats. He's not sure. He'll take this as a learning experience. Look at this as they come down the front straight. It's the tie boat in the lead. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes trying to close the gap. Mike Hansen doing a great job of driving. He's got the power going for him as they go into the turn. Let's see if Tide can hold on to the lead. He's got the advantage. He has less of a course to run because he's on the inside. But with the speed boat on the outside, he can maintain a little bit more speed and sometimes make up that distance. But it doesn't look like George Woods Jr. is going to give him that chance. As you're talking about the race course, you have to learn it. As we look at the Circus Circus back in action for the first time since the accident in Detroit, this course, every course, changes every time. As we look at the Gerst Amber, Ken Muscatel currently riding in fifth place. Every time they go around the course, it changes. A roller, a wave, a hole. They have to read it. They have to be quick. And this boat is the quickest of them all. And heat to A, the tie boat, George Woods Jr. takes the win. Oh, that is going to make that crew happy. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes in second. Miss T plus third. The Circus Circus in fourth. And Gerst Amber with Ken Muscatel finishes in fifth place. We'll be back to the Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio Freedom Festival right after this timeout. Jim Hendrick along with Dick Crippen here at Evansville, Indiana on the Ohio River as we look at one end of the course, there is the spectator fleet. Let's get on to Dick Crippen now with the winner, George Woods of the last heat. George, uh, I don't think it could have been any prettier. Oh, thank you very much, Dick. Uh, both handling very, very well. You know, it's, it's rough out there, and it seems that it likes, it likes the rough water. So, you know, if the other guy's got to lift because it's a little too rough, I think that's going to give us an advantage all day long. You appeared to have a challenge from the Kellogg's for just a short time out there, and all of a sudden he kind of fell off the pace. Well, after I got out a little bit, then I can kind of move around somewhat, kind of kind of work him over a little bit is what it's called. And, <laughs> and, and it's no fun being right on somebody's hip or just being slightly behind them because they can kind of steer you around, and that makes you me make your maneuvers maybe just slightly a little hesitant. Well, you had no hesitancy leaving the start line. You knew what you wanted, and you went for it. We wanted the 400 points, and we got her. Well, congratulations, George Woods, Jr., on a great win. Problems for the Winston Eagle all season long thus far. Steve Woomer has been the man overseeing them all. Down here in the Winston camp with owner Steve Woomer. And, Steve, speeds have increased since last year on the Winston Eagle, but you've had some gremlins hit you. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's been a real strange season for us so far. Uh, the boat set some world records and uh, run real good, and it's run real good in some heats, but uh, it seems to be always something that gets us. And uh, it's one of those unfortunate years. Usually you make your own luck, but uh, we've had some things happen that just shouldn't happen, and uh, it's nobody's fault. Nobody's fault in the engine department or any of our other programs. It's just something that's happened, and I guess uh, what the Winston Eagle needs right now is that one ounce of luck. We'll see if that one ounce of luck is in the future shortly. Right now, Heat 2B, Miss Budweiser, Art Construction, Alvey's American Eagle, and the Winston Eagle ready on the course. And this will be the second time head-to-head -head competition between what many consider the two top boats, with Winston Eagle on the outside, Budweiser in lane number one. And that's where it's going to be interesting as they take the green flag and head down this fast Ohio River course to turn number one. You can see that Winston Eagle on the left of your screen has started to break away a little bit, but the real breakaway boat is the boat in lane number one, the Miss Budweiser. You can see the front of the boat hitting some of the wave action down in turn number two as they come out on the back straightaway. It looks like a challenge from the Ark Construction boat. He's in between those two, sitting back in the rooster tail. The challenge is mounted by the Winston Eagle. Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer, sees the challenge, comes up on it, takes the lead. Ark Construction now riding in third place. Still the challenge is there from Winston Eagle in second. This is the first of three laps. 151.412 as Winston pushes the Budweiser to over 151 mile an hour lap. That's one thing you can count on with these two boats. You know that one is going to push the other all the time. You know that Chip Hanauer is watching in his rear view mirrors, which sit off to his side right and left, to see where the Winston Eagle is. And he's going to keep an eye on him. And if that boat fills up that little mirror that he looks into, he's going to hit the power all he's got to try to get away from him. Right now, he's maintaining a good margin, and it's very steady. This is your lead boat, the Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer, out of the state of Washington, out of the state of Michigan in second place through that veil of the rooster tail you can see the day glow red of the Winston Eagle are you ready for this kick the Budweiser has just been pushed to a new two mile competition lap record of 156.7 Budweiser it's a new world record on a two mile course your record guess who held it last year same course Budweiser an hour but he beats his old record by about three mile an hour well, it's the pushing of Winston Eagle that's forcing them to go that fast. And right behind Winston Eagle, riding in third, is the Ark Construction Boat, American Spirit, driven by Mark Evans. Three boats that are putting on a fine race for the 100,000 fans. There you see Alvey's American Eagle, Mitch Evans, the only piston packer up front, coming home for the checkered flag, however, is the Miss Budweiser. Chip had our final turn down the straightaway. Great job at driving. And another record, a new six-mile heat two-mile course world record at 154.185 average beating his old record by a couple of miles an hour second place for the winston eagle third dark construction and the american eagle finished overall for it more success for the miss budweiser ron brown the crew chief certainly is the man you can give a lot of credit to what does he attribute all the success to the bottom line comes down to the personnel that work underneath me and with me uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and we have uh, uh, not only the best driver in the world, but we have uh, uh, the most experienced in, uh, uh, people in every one of the areas that I referred to. And um, I think the experience those people have and the expertise they have, whether it comes to the computers, whether it comes to designing a gearbox or designing an aerodynamic uh, foil that goes onto the boat, um, it's that stuff that makes my job much easier. All I can be is just an extension of what these other people are doing. Ron Brown commenting from Seattle before the season on the success of Miss Budweiser. We'll be back with the RC Cola Unlimited Hydroplane Series in a moment. A good crowd this year here in Evansville, thanks to the efforts of Jan Turbach and her staff, especially a big thanks to the guy who runs the pits, Tom Sawyer. Thanks for your cooperation. Now it's time for the T-Plus Performance Corner, an inside look at Unlimited Hydros. Hi, I'm Mitch Evans, driver of Ed Cooper's piston-powered Unlimited Hydroplane. I'm here today to tell you the difference between the turbine engine and the piston engine we use in our boat. 
As you can see, there's quite a difference in physical size between the Circus Circus turbine engine and the Allison aircraft engine that we use. This engine was built and designed World War II, used in the P-38s and P-51s, where the turbine engine came out of the Chinook helicopters in the Vietnam War. These engines weigh about 2,000 pounds and produce about 2,500 horsepower, where the turbine weighs about 700 pounds and produces almost 3,000 horsepower. This Allison aircraft engine that we use is turbocharged and fuel injected. We currently hold all the qualifying and competition lap speed records for the piston-powered unlimited hydroplane. Basically, we have used all the horsepower we can out of this engine and looking to change in the future. When we change from the turbine engine and put the piston engine away, that will be the end of a legacy, not only for us, but for the people that participated in the sport years ago, such as Garwood, Bill Muncy, and Dean Chenoweth. Thank you, Mitch Evans, for that inside look at those engine-powered plants that run the Unlimiteds. His brother, Mark, runs the turbine, and he's running much faster in 1993. Here's Dick Griffin. This time last year, I remember seeing a true example of water and air as in hydroplane. That's right. We, we got the old plane part <laughs> going there. That was quite a, quite a ride. But thanks for safety equipment. Came out all right. No problem. You come in this year, you uh, were in Detroit, you had a great run up in Detroit. You saw that this boat really could perform. Right. Uh, we had stumbled quite a bit when we were down in Dallas, Texas, and was uh, pretty concerned about how it was going to ride and all that, and got out there in uh, the first couple of heats, and the thing went like a rocket and handled well in the rough, so that's what uh, really, I really enjoyed about the boat. There are many different activities in each race city that we race in, and of course, the appearance of the pride of Anheuser-Busch, the Clydesdale, always the highlight. Now, here they're getting ready for a parade that was held a couple of days ago as you look at these horses they are bred raised and trained by anheuser-busch just for this particular function and they make many appearances across the country there are three such teams eight thousand dollars worth of harness on each and every horse and are they not a thing of beauty take a look at these huge draft horses called the clydesdales Old mascot Dalmatian on top. Speaking of on top, upstairs, our cameraman Jim Smith is looking down at the crowd. He's getting ready to show us the top view of Heat 3A. And I'll tell you what, he's one of the best. He's been showing us some great shots from high atop the course. Miss T Plus in lane one, lane two, the tide, our construction lane three. Miss Circus Circus in lane four. And Albie's American Eagle, you just met Mitch Evans a few moments ago. He'll be in lane number five. As they come down, there's the green flag. It's the start of Heat 3A. And it looks as though the tide is out front at the very first time now. And he's being pressed by our construction boat. What a lineup. Look as they go into corner number one. They are really close, Dick. One mistake, and you got Timberwood. On the inside, lane number one. The T-plus has now taken the lead. Boy, what a tight pack going into that turn. Coming out, they separate just a little bit. The battle is now for second place between the tide boat and it looked like our construction. So those two boats are battling now for second place. There you see tide still in the bale of the rooster tail from the lead boat, which is the T plus. Stephen David out of the Pompano Beach area of Florida doing a great job of driving a brand new boat, still learning about how the boat handles. You know these boats skip across the water, they slide in the turns. You've really got to adjust the boat out. There's second place, our construction, Mark Evans. And he is right on the tail. But he doesn't know he's now the lead boat. Our construction takes over first because this boat right here, Key Plus, Steve David, has just been called for an extra lap penalty for bearing out on the our construction in quarter number four. Well, that's your new leader. Fortunately, there was no accident that occurred there, so our construction holds in. But uh, as you can see right now, he is still trailing on the course, the T-plus boat, because that boat will just be required to go the extra lap at the end of the race. That'll put him in last place in this field, unless something happens to one of the other boats and he's able to lap them. But right now, they're all up and running and seem to be solid. There's your leader, Mark Evans. He is going to be one happy guy when he gets back in. As we told you earlier, he goes out to qualify. This is not a high-dollar team. So as a result, he doesn't want to break a lot of parts or break the boat or anything. He takes it easy in qualifying, but he opens it up when it comes to racing. So now he gets himself a first place for good driving and good handling. Trailing the field right now, as far as the boats are running, is Alvey's American Eagle riding back in fourth place. But of course, the last boat on is actually the first T-plus because that's the way the penalty works. 
second place to tie George Woods Jr. He's had a third and a first today, and he's running pretty well. Boat not running quite like they'd like to have it. Watch the Circus Circus. Milwaukee still getting a little porpoising ride. As we look at our leader, coming off the apex of corners, three and four, come down to take a checker flag and pick up 400 points in the high point chase. Of course, the O'Doul's high point championship. He's going to be one happy driver when we talk to him in just a few moments down in the pits. Mark Evans in the art construction takes first place in the heat, followed by the Tide in second, Circus Circus third, American Eagle fourth, and the Miss T plus with a penalty in fifth. Let's go to the pits, Jim Hendrick. You're not used to a day like this. Hey, no, but we'll take it. I'm learning to like this. That's fun. Your hard construction boat's just hauling. All right, now you were back with T plus. Did you see what he did? No, I didn't. Do we have a problem out there? Well, T plus has been uh, declared, of course, uh, a lap penalty, and you're the winner. Well, he was pushing out, you know, but it's just hard to call until I see what's going on here a little bit later. I can't make a call at all. All I know is that just hanging on to my boat and, you know, just take care of temperatures and gauges and trying to run aggressively conservative, sort of. And of course, you in the final. That's right, it does. So, sorry, Fred, but we're in there. Uh, and uh, good, uh, hello to the guys at the Rock Station back home. That's for you guys. <laughs> Mark Evans, as we continue with the RC Colon Limited Hydroplane Series, Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio, back in a moment. Back in the Ohio River, we're getting ready for Heat 3B. There's a problem down in the Circus Circus Camp. Let's go down to Dick Crippen for a report. Jim, this is something we haven't seen, uh, at least uh, this season. The fiberglass literally peeled back from the Circus Circus. He didn't hit into anything. There's really no indentation. They're making some indentations on the boat right now as they work on the hull. They have another piece right over here, if you take a look. This is going to fit right over the uh, sponson, so they're going to cover it up. You won't be able to read the sponsor's name on that side of the boat, but right now they're concerned about getting this boat back into the water and making it run again. And I'm sure they will, Dick, because this crew works very, very hard. They know they're job they'll have the boat back in competition every city has a memorial that they're very proud of and Evansville Indiana is no different the four freedoms memorial monument over the Ohio River is very much a part of this race this is probably one of the most unique trophies in all of motorsports. It goes to the winner of Thunder on the Ohio, and it is modeled after this. The Four Freedoms Memorial in downtown Evansville that happens to overlook the Ohio River, which holds the course for Thunder on the Ohio. This is a very unique memorial. It salutes not only Four Freedoms, but it also salutes the date of entry for each of the United States, and they are portrayed on these pedestals that surround the monument. It's interesting because on the actual trophy, the pedestals have not only the name and the boat name, but also the year of the win. The trophy was started in 1979 when Thunder on the Ohio resumed here in Evansville, Indiana. Chip Hanauer, because of his record time in qualifying, is certainly a favorite going into this race to win the trophy. But there's other reasons. Chip Hanauer happens to be the only driver active in this field today who has won this race before. He's taken it five times with four different sponsors. Miss Budweiser, the boat that he is now driving, also has been a winner of this race the last three years, and that with three different drivers. It is a unique trophy, a unique memorial, and it definitely says Evansville, Indiana. And once again, Freddie Little hopes to take that trophy home for another time, as he is the defending champ. Dick Crippen talked to Bernie about that honor moments ago. Evansville, Indiana, that means the defending champ again this year is the Miss Budweiser. A little pressure on that? Well, there is, Dick, and excuse me, I'm losing my voice here, but uh, yes, there is. We want to do better at each race, and uh, in fact, uh, it all came together this week here in Evansville. And uh, the Budweiser is running up to speed now. We set a new world record, and uh, uh, we're we're uh, really feel real good about it. Think we're going to have a great day. Four boats will answer the call here in 3B. Lane one will be Miss Budweiser. Lane two, guess who drew each other again? Winston Eagle. Kellogg's and Gerst Amber rounds out the four-boat field, Dick. Green flag down, and right off the bat, these boats are going to be even, Stephen, but it's the two boats on the inside you want to keep an eye on, especially Miss Budweiser in lane number one, Winston Eagle, lane two, and look how close they come, deck to deck as they go down and get ready to set up for the turn. Miss Budweiser on the inside, Winston Eagle on the outside, back in third now. It's Kellogg's Frosted Flakes on the far outside of your screen as they come down onto the back stretch. Miss Budweiser has taken the lead. We're getting a word from the officials that we may have a double penalty. Miss Budweiser for bearing out in that first turn and the Winston for chopping in. These two boats, which
which you're now running first and second, maybe running third and fourth if they both get that extra lap penalty. There may be some discussion on that, so we'll wait before we call it official, but at the moment, the Miss Budweiser is leading the pack. Winston Eagle is now second, but this is as they run. We're waiting to get official confirmation on the penalty to Miss Budweiser and the Winston Eagle. If those penalties hold true, then the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, now riding in third, could take a first place with Gerst Amber in second. Gerst Amber at the moment riding in fourth place. That would be quite a change of events, and it would definitely have a strong effect on the points for this race heading to the championship. Yeah, only the top five with a trailer will get in the championship run. Now, as it stands, this boat, the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, with a double penalty, is your first place boat. It would be quite a reward to Mike Hansen and his crew out of Madison, Indiana, because they've worked hard on this boat, and they've really got it running very well this year. They're just kind of looking to break a bubble and move up into the front of the pack. Gerst Amber now is riding second, and that's, again, unofficial until everything is complete on the discussion over the race. But Ken Muscatel would certainly be happy with a second place. He's happy that the boat is running as well as it is. Now the Budweiser and the Winston, a double penalty, one for bearing out, one for bearing in, almost met there in corner number one, makes this boat the leader as we are on lap number three. Jim, we're just getting the word in now. They have had a discussion of the officials, and apparently the Miss Budweiser is the only boat that will suffer a penalty. They're going to say that Chip Hanauer was bearing out on turn number one at the start of the race. That means Winston Eagle, as the checkered flag flies, takes the win. Mark Tate with a win. This is going to make that team very happy. We'll see just how happy when we return to Evansville, Indiana, in just a few moments. Jim Hendrick along with Dick Griffin back here at Evansville, Indiana for the fourth stop on the RC Cola Hundred Point Series 93. Let's look at the O'Doul scoreboard with the Budweiser, the only one penalized. It's the Winston Eagle first, Kellogg second, Gerst Amber third, Budweiser overall fourth. Let's go to Dick Griffin. Well, Mark, for a minute there, it looked like you weren't going to win this race, but uh, they ruled that Budweiser moved over, and under the rules, you have to move out of the way. Yeah, we got down to the first corner. You know, both of us got in there pretty tight together, and uh, uh, Chip hit a little trough and came out, and I moved off, and then I hit a couple troughs, and, uh, you know, it was a break. Finally, one went the Winston Eagle way. Maybe our racing luck's changing, and uh, we'll take the heat win, and we'll see what happens in the final. Well, it's at least a win for you. That's got to boost the team up a little bit. It's been some rough go lately. Yeah, it is. You know, the Winston Eagle team has not had real good racing and luck, and, uh, you know, when I got to the dock, the team was pretty fired up, so uh, hopefully we can carry that over into the final. It's a hot day, but the fans are enjoying all the action of this Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio. And we also have a new fan, a very special guest, with Dick Griffin right now. I don't think this man needs any introduction at all, Merv Griffin. It's great to see you in Evansville, Indiana. Oh, thank you. How'd you like some of those uh, rides I gave you out there? <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, you're here for your first time seeing Unlocked, aren't you? What a sport. Well, I've seen it. You know, I'm, I'm an ESPN uh, follower, so I see everything on your network. But I've never seen this in person before is thrilling one of the surprises i thought it was going to be a lot noisier sport than it is but since they're using the jet engines now it's a much quieter sport but it's thrilling my lord and it's nice to have Rick griffin witness our sport all right the last chance one of these boats will advance to the final this is their last chance as they dash for the checkered flag calvary's american eagle Miss Circus Circus and the first Amber. Dick and only one will make the final field with the top boats. Right now, it looks like it's going to be the Miss Circus Circus. Dave Billwalk wasted no time at all getting out in front of the rest of the pack. Alvey's American Eagle and Gerst Amber fighting for second place in this one. They are neck and neck on the course. The only boat riding alone with no competition at the moment is this boat, the Circus Circus. And this, as we say, is the new boat. It was the one that got destroyed up in Detroit, and they rebuilt it. There you can see Gerst Amber has a very slight lead for second place over the Alvey's American Eagle. As they come around, checkered flag will go out to Dave Billwock. He is going to be happy to get that boat moved up into the championship heat. He'll be the trailer boat, but it matters little to him at this point. The idea being to get up there. We'll see how that boat and the rest of the field does in the championship heat for Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio coming up next. 
getting set here in Evansville, Indiana, on the Ohio River for the championship run of Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio. The final field is set. Dick Crippen is with one of the competitors right now. One guy we've been watching all year long is Mike Hansen in the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes, because, Mike, you have been getting better and better. As a matter of fact, right now, second in high points, and a lot of people don't realize it. Yeah, we're, uh, we're real happy with our performance for the Kellogg's boat this year. It's run consistent. It's running fast enough to win boat races, and we haven't broke anything, so we're real pleased. And here you come home, because after all, the Ohio does run through your hometown, where we'll be next time around. Yeah, the water out here right now probably went by my house about uh, 2 o'clock yesterday afternoon. So this is this is home turf. We test on the Ohio River back in Madison. Uh, next weekend, we'll be in Madison racing. We want to win both the Indiana boat races, so we got everything set on kill, ready for this, this race. Well, the fans are enjoying it, Dick Trippin, as we look at the starting lineup for the final championship heat. We have really got cream of the crop here. Art Construction, Mark Evans in lane number one. Lane two will be the Winston Eagle with Mark Tate aboard. Lane three will be the Miss Budweiser, Chip Hanauer. The Tide Boat, George Woods Jr. will be in lane four. Lane five, the man you just met, Mike Hansen in the Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. Lane six, Steve David, the Miss T Plus, and the Trailer Boat, the boat that won the last chance, Miss Circus Circus, Dave Billwatt. Attention to the course, green flag has flown, and let's watch as these boats come around into the first turn. It is gonna be a battle. Winston Eagle in lane number two, trying to take the lead away immediately. Our construction on the inside, Mark Evans. The boat on the outside in lane three is none other than the Miss Budweiser. Chip Hanauer now ties it up with the Winston Eagle. It puts Mark Evans back into third place. It's a deck-to-deck -deck battle out of turn number two down the back straightaway. Oh, they are honking. They got that pedal. The gas sticks forward all the way. Not even letting up. Look at the skid bits. That's the only thing that slows them down in the turns. It is the Winston Eagle coming out on top. But watch the Budweiser. He'll do a slingshot deal, keeping his RPMs up as they come down to complete lap number one of five. This is the test area. This is where the Winston Eagle finds out if he has the straightaway speed on the Miss Budweiser. Right at the moment, Chip Hanauer is back in second place, but he has not even given the leader a boat lane. He's staying right on his right hip as they go through turn number two. They hit the back stretch again. Let's see how the Budweiser handles the back stretch. He looks like he's got a little more power, but no, again, Winston Eagle just noses ahead. And there goes the Budweiser. You can see both boats getting a little bit of the wake action out there now as the course starts to roughen up at the end of lap number two. It is still the Winston Eagle battling to hold on to the lead position. Miss Budweiser right behind. This is some of the best racing we've seen in the last five or six years. So close, so fast. The lead has changed hands four times as we look down from our helicopter shot. In tight. Oh! I think the Winston Eagle just clipped that buoy. Jim, it looks like it has. It looks like part of the buoy remains on the front part. We're going to have to see if he can handle the boat now. He's held on to it, but I'm sure a penalty will be forthcoming from URC. Meanwhile, the Miss Budweiser on the outside still battling to hold on to first. I'll tell you what, no matter what happens in this race, Mark Tate has definitely served notice to the Budweiser. That's a crying shame. We had that competition the best in years. Side by side, only to clip a buoy and get a one-lap penalty, which has now been declared official. Jim, if we can look at the front pickle fork, the left-hand side, you can see the buoy. You can see it actually flying part of it, flying off to the side of the Winston Eagle. He has hooked it. It's going to take the rest of the ride with him, apparently. Now, the rule is, if you hit a buoy, it's okay. You don't get penalized unless the buoy is dislodged or ceases to be a marker. It's destroyed or partially destroyed. That's what's happened to this boat, the Winston Eagle, a tough break for Mark T. It certainly is. He has driven a great race out there. Looks like maybe the buoy has finally come off of the boat. Third place to tie, George Woods Jr. He's done a good job. Mark Tate served his notice out there. The Miss Budweiser now starting to lap the field, going by Circus Circus this time around. Dave Milwaukee started the Circus Circus as the trailer boat. That's a tough position, no question about it. At least he got into the championship heat. That's something of a moral victory for the crew. And that crew has worked very hard 
Caesar Long to hold that boat together. You know, Dick, what's a shame is, as we look at the Kellogg's cross the with Mike Hansen in fourth place, the average is going to be about 147 mile an hour. Had the penalty not been called, had the Winston not hit the buoy, that had been another record, I'll bet you, for a 10 mile heat. I would not doubt that at all. We talk about some of the roughness. You just saw Circus Circus plowing through some of the waves out here. Compare that to the boat that's leading, and that's the advantage to taking the lead. There's Art Construction. That's now the second-place boat. Mark Evans, here's your leader coming down. The checkered flag is out over the Ohio River. Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio goes to Chip Hanauer, the defending champion. He is the winner in the Miss Budweiser. And serious Monson damage the boat of a brand new T-plus. The boat is going back to Seattle for repairs. The art construction, likewise, the entire tail assembly, gone. We'll be back with the winning driver interview in just a moment. Well, here are the final results with Miss Budweiser winning its third consecutive victory. Art construction, a fine second, the tie third, Kellogg fourth, Winston Eagle overall fifth. Let's go to the winner's dock. Chip, I think you've been racing this time. <laughs> yeah, that was really, really fun. You know, it was like racing A-stock hydro, which is what class I started in, which is a little 10 horsepower boat. And you race like that every week. But to do it at 200 miles an hour in the Budweiser with unlimited, it, it was really fun. Tiring, but really fun. Six thunder on the Ohio. Yeah, you know, I, I, again, I, I'm not one to look ahead or, or look behind what's happened. I'm just so happy about today because I felt we had a bad call in one heat and it gave us a bad lane draw. And to be able to win from where we did, I'm just really pleased about that. Well, six for him, but uh, now this is the first time, Bernie, you've had a repeat winner as a driver on this. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I apologize for my voice. I want to the out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyhow. And I can hear him out there. Yeah. <laughs> God, that's boat racing. That's what it's all about. And I want to tell you that... Uh, uh, the Ohio, the, they're all great, and uh, what, what can I say? I never had a racer drive for me like that. I think we need to charge the fans an extra ten dollars for that. <laughs> I mean, they, I think the fans here in Evansville, Indiana, probably got the best boat race that's happened in a, in a long time. Sure. So, yeah. I, they got to be happy. Yes, it was a good race, Chip, on the RC Cola Honda Plane Series '93. Here is the O'Doul's High Point Championship lineups with the Miss Budweiser leading, tied Kellogg's Winston. Circus Circus and T-Plus, top three-point getters, run for the O'Doul shootout in Honolulu. If you'd like more information on Unlimited Hydroplane Racing, write to the Unlimited Racing Commission, 414 Pontius Avenue, North Suite C, Seattle, Washington, or call the number on your screen. Records fell left and right here at Evansville. The Miss Budweiser, the winning team, the fastest heat for six miles, the fastest heat for 10 miles, the fastest lap ever on a two-mile course, but the victory did not come that easy, Dick Rippon. No, it didn't, Jim. As a matter of fact, I think Chip Hanauer summed things up to us on the dock when he said it was the racing that he remembered from his youth. And he's not that old, but here's a guy that went out there with Mark Tate, and they just went deck to deck, bow to bow for several laps, and that's the kind of racing that not only do the fans like and appreciate, but the drivers enjoy it, too. They have respect for each other, they have respect for the equipment they are driving, respectively, and they have a lot of fun with it. They, this is the way it's supposed to be, and that's what it was today. Evansville got a big race. Before the next race, the Tide and the Circus Circus minor repairs, it'll be a backup T-plus boat until Kansas City. will be our next stop on the same Ohio River, but a little bit farther upstream in Madison, Indiana, for the Budweiser Indiana Governor's Cup. On behalf of Dick Crippen, I'm Jim Hendricks. So long. The Budweiser Thunder on the Ohio was sponsored by... RC Cola, race to the taste of RC Cola, me and my RC. By T Plus, beat the daily grind, use T Plus, the engine treatment with DuPont Teflon.